What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 11, episode 6. Oh, no, episode 7. The Sisterhood of the Traveling Peaches, bitch. You know, so let's just get into this episode. Y'all, pause. Before we get into this, I was going to save it for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you know what? I'll save it for tomorrow because it's about it's about it's about love and hip hop. I just seen catfish. <sighs> Are you serious? Okay. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Um <laughs> Real Housewives. So it starts off with, you know, um Portia, she's going to Dennis work and she's gonna be an employee for the day. And I I don't know. Portia little things, they are kind of like, they don't annoy me when she's not being so, oh, my man, my man. But in the confessionals, when she kept on saying, my husband, my husband, my mother-in-law, oh, I wanted to call her mine. You know, that was a little like, girl, calm down, slow it down. It do make me cringe a little bit to see how fast she's going. But, you know, people move at their own pace. But other than that, her scenes with Dennis and, you know, scenes like this, they're comical to me, and it's like the com comic relief of the whole episodes, and I have no problem with them. So, I think they're a little cute. You know, her in the back trying to, you know, do put the bacon on the hot dog, and I said, Dennis, that's what y'all selling, bitch. We be doing that here at the house all the time. But anyway, you know, you do what you gotta do. Um, make money off of how you can make money, okay? And his mama was back there, and, you know, she just messing up stuff, eating up the food and shit like that. She said she's not going to tell anybody that she's pregnant yet because they're at the beginning stages. And that makes sense because you never know what can happen between that first and second trimester, them first three months. Um, so... She went on break at three hours, okay, and she's just over it. And so she's sitting there with the mom, and, you know, the mom was just saying, is there anything that I need to know y'all ain't telling me or whatever? Because it seemed like y'all moving kind of fast. Portia's the type of bitch, her facial expressions will give the shit away that she had in something, okay? The way she sipped on that tea, I was like, girl, you don't want nobody to know, but you put it out there that something's going on, and a mother's intuition knows that something is going on that you're not saying, okay? But... Other than that, the mom actually did give her blessing saying that she liked them as a couple and like where it's going, though. You know, so that was a good look for Portia on Portia Ann. And seeing Dennis being, you know, real about his work, like, bitch, no, uh-uh. Come on, you fucking the shit up. You ain't supposed to be eating the shit, bitch. We got to bring this shit out, okay? No, you put the bacon on the hot dog like this. You got to make sure it's all the way in like that, you know, just like I did with you. You know, shit like that. It was it was really nice to see that. Um, I, I like seeing hardworking black men anyway. I don't care what they doing as long as you got a goddamn job, bitch. Because, you know, they always say niggas can't get jobs. But anyway, so, you know, we got to break that stereotype. We got to break that stereotype. So, shout out to my niggas. Anyway, moving on from that, we get Cynthia on the phone. She FaceTiming, um 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 Nene and it just made me laugh and made me chuckle to see what she had on now see Cynthia in my opinion that bitch would dress down in some you know overalls and some slacks or whatever around the house because bitch I'm around the house why well, I need to dress all the fuck up you know and it just made me laugh because of what um what was it two episodes ago when Marlo said it's so nice to see you looking feminine all of a sudden, you know, because you always so tomboyish lately, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it just made me chuckle at that. She basically had to tell Nene that this couple trip that they were supposed to be going on, she's going to not be a couple. She's going to be a single at this point because um, Mike couldn't make it. He was coming, but he can't make it. And so Nene was like, okay, well, fuck this shit. I found a new little house and they got little bunk beds or whatever. And you're going to be up in one of the bunk beds because, bitch, we're going to save it for the ones who got couples and uh, mans and stuff. And they're going to do what they're going to do. Then we get this whole scene with Shamari. Shamari got a stylist, y'all. I said, Shamari, you really got a stylist that's out here dressing you up in 2005, throw me downs, hand me downs, or whatever, throwbacks and hand me downs. Okay, you know, she was like, I got me a stylist so I can do this and I can stunt or whatever so these girls can't be talking about that. I don't know how to dress because I don't know what they talking about with this fashion shit. Bitch, you don't. Okay. Um, I ain't dressed like shit, but bitch, you don't. Okay. But moving on from that, you got uh, <laughs> Ronnie coming up in there. 
and they're talking about everything that's going on and how, you know, how she's getting along with everybody. She was like, you know, me and Candy, we cool. We know each other and all that stuff. And then there's Portia. It was like, yeah, what's going on with that whole thing with Portia? First, it was the slight at the ba Bailey Q about the fashion. Then when she came in, you know, she didn't even say nothing to me or whatever. She said hello to everybody. And it's like, what's going on? Both of us from Decatur, bitch. We went to high school together. The way that she said we both from Decatur to get it together, I'm sitting here like... You say that as if you and Portia was the only one from Decatur, that y'all was the only population. Y'all consist Decatur, Atlanta, Decatur, Atlanta, Decatur, Georgia consisted of Shamari and Portia. And then y'all was the only two rep, uh, uh, residents in there. And so, therefore, y'all had to know each other. She said that, like, girl, girl, get over it, okay? Just get over it. If you got such an issue and you feel it on your chest like, bitch, why you don't like me, just ask the bitch, do you got a problem with me? And let that shit be done. Why everybody got to like you? You know what I'm saying? Ugh, it just ain't going to happen. Girl, calm down. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> So my TV was kind of messing up a little bit, but anyway, um, Candy was talking to uh little Riley. Riley is really coming into her own. I will say that, you know, um, she was like, you know, have fun on your little couples trip or whatever. Since you ain't taking me on no trip, you know, my birthday coming up. We just came back from Dubai and all that shit. You know, I whatever that little interaction, I kind of do like it, you know, because Riley began Candy together some of the time. Then we had this whole uh, scene with Nene and Greg, and we see Greg feeling a little bit better. And, you know, Nene said it's been three months after he had his, um, you know, colon surgery. And ever since then, and he didn't start the chemotherapy. He's not going that route. He's still, you know, adamant that he don't want to do the chemo. He's want to do the holistic type uh, of treatment. And so, we see him with a little bit more energy. He was for the life of him. He said he was going to get that stain out that marble countertop. Marble, granite, whatever the fuck you want to call it. He was going to get that stain out the um, countertop. Nene on the phone with Portia. Portia called and telling her, you know, um, because they was like, we got to come up with some games or whatever. You know, let's do some pillow talks or whatever. And it was like, ooh, no, no pillow talk. Because then they did a flashback to the last pillow talk when Candy was like, and I cut that bitch and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And then it was like, okay, well, we can do like truth or dare. And Greg said something. It was like, do y'all eat cereal or some shit like that? He was, And then he said, no, nah, bitch, we ain't finna do no shit like that. That's like, you got to be spiced up. Like saying, oh, I dare you to suck your titty, suck my titty in front of everybody or some shit. Nene is a freak, okay? That's what I come to learn. You know, she like titties. She like tits, you know? It's understandable. You know, their nature is fun bags, but, you know. Nature's pillows, okay? And so, they was doing all of that, and Greg was still trying to get that stain out there. You know, first he had the 409, then he had the bleach, then he had the CRL, then he had something else, bitch, it just wasn't coming out. And then Candy called, and, uh, well, Portia called, said that Dennis not going to be able to make it on the couple's trip because he was playing basketball with Eva's uh, fiancé slash husband now, Michael, and he fucked his leg up. So his leg is acting up, so she's, he's not going to be able to come. Then Candy had called earlier and told her that, you know, she's not, uh, Ty's not going to be able to come because he got shit to do. So she like, should we just postpone the trip because... This can't be a couple's a couple's trip with no couples, okay? And you know, Mike Mike Hill's not coming as well, so that's three men that aren't coming. So it's like, what's happening, okay? And Greg, I don't think really cared. Greg said, you know, we need the fellas, but Greg was more so concerned about that goddamn stain on the countertop. So Candy, you know, offered her guest house as the meeting place for everybody to meet up, so they can go on this trip to Destin, and. Um, you know, she had, I guess, the little nanny or the cook or whoever was there. I don't know who she was, but she was there with Ace. And Ace was just in there looking at his little shark doodle and, um, you know, doing what he had to do. And then Portia showed up and, you know, Ace was all clinging to her and she was really good with him. I forgot that her sister do have a child or she has a niece herself. And, you know, it seems like Portia may actually be a little good with kids. You know, she asked him, did he want some fruit? He said, yes. You want some watermelon? He said, yes. You want some pineapples? No. Okay, I was just trying to check and see if you was just saying yes to be saying yes. And he sat his ass down and he was eating that food. And 
and she was like, they oh girl told her, you know, he wasn't in shit until you came. So maybe it's just you or whatever. And Portia got in her feelings a little bit. It was like, damn, Candy, can we just be friends so I can babysit Ace? This is something special. And on the one hand, I want them to go back to being friends. But, you know, I don't know because it's like so much shade and drama. You just, it, it, they will never have that closeness that they used to have. And that's sad because they did have a little, a cute uh, little friendship or whatever. Um, And then Cynthia showed up. Shamari showed up. Cynthia showed up. The men are not coming. Uh, Greg didn't want Nene to leave him, but he knew what it was, and he really was disappointed a little bit because he wanted to go on the trip as well, but he sacrificed, um, you know, his time with Nene to let them go on the trip by themselves and have another girl trip, and, um, you know, everybody's coming into the house, Tanya gets there, and, you know, Tanya about to, uh, Shamari and Tanya, they finna get the, uh, alcohol flowing and shit like that, and Porsche was like, I don't want no alcohol because I'm on the alcohol cleanse, I'm two weeks free from clean from alcohol she was like girl tanya seems to get it okay but um i was with portion when she said that shit about oh girl said how about we have a cup of alcohol in the morning and then we go wake uh uh, uh you know work out and all that shit bitch i'm on vacation i ain't gonna work out okay i do that shit on the regular when i'm at home chill on vacation them cheat days okay you know i eat clean and all that stuff the whole time but then on vacation bitch it's a free for fucking all okay and then i have to pay for it when i get home and put in double time you know what i'm saying but um yeah, she was like, girl, I don't know how much uh, this little excuse, this alcohol cleanse going to get back. Tanya seemed like the only one that can back because she said, bitch, you know, the mama's going to start, um, you know, noticing that something ain't right. Okay, that mother sends the question. Then you got Eva, she coming in. She just came back from her bachelor party in Miami. And she like, bitch, I need this trip to Destin to be, you know, calm, cool, and collected because I'm tired as fuck. Okay, Marlo shows up. Nene show up. Um, when everybody gets there you know candy come down there and um she was like marlo and guess what i just realized i ain't got no doormats you know a little play on what happened between marlo and portia that whole shit about the doormats and stuff it was cute everybody laughed at it then you had greg come up there and give this speech just like a old ass granddaddy okay he was like i want you girls to go down there to destin and I want y'all to have fun with one another and get to know one another. And I want y'all to come back knowing something different about each other, okay? It was like, you know, Portia was like, it ain't going to be that hard. It's because uh, um, some of them got two faces. Okay, we'll learn something about both of them faces, okay? It was like, and just to let you know, you know, it takes a lot of lumber to build a bridge. And not one piece of lumber is more important than the next. Every one of that piece of lumber uh, plays its part. Girl, I was sitting here like, Greg, you better fucking preach, okay? Sounded like some shit my granddaddy would say, okay? But, you know, it was really nice. So far, everybody's getting along. We'll see how long that shit lasts. So the girls are all getting ready to go. You know, they get packed in the bin. Um, you know, Candy didn't know what she was going to uh, sit at. Nene did come up with a little system. She had a bowl full of numbers, and she wanted everybody to pick a number. And she said, this is the first round pick as to see what's going to happen with the rooms. And we will find out what the um, numbers mean once they get to Destin. Mind you, Destin is like a four or five hour car drive, you know. And so, they got to do some stuff to make the time pass by. So, they doing truth or dare. Okay? So, they wrote some stuff down to put in the, um, you know, in a in little bowl for the dares and stuff. And then... You know, um, they're going to ask another person a truth or whatever. And so, they get started. The first person, Shamari, to pull the dare, you know, you got to let the person that's either on the side of you, you know, suck your fingers and all that stuff. Marlo said, bitch, hell no. Nah. So, Eva was the next person. So, Eva wind up sucking her finger. Now, right when she did that shit, I said, bitch, I hope them bitches is clean because you've been on this bus for how long and you was touching shit. And so, come to find out, they were a little bit clean because, you know, she put some hand sanitizer on. Eva said it won the... It won horrible but it was disgusting because it tastes like hand sanitizer shamari was all here for it okay shamari was like oh you got that tongue action thing going on let me find out girl shit i felt a tingle in my vajayjay i said shamari wants some puss 
Okay, Ronnie, whatever Ronnie doing, it's cool. It's cool and all, but Samari want her puss on the side too, okay? Because she was all hyped throughout this whole thing about, you know, boobs and JJ's. okay? Um, the next one was for Eva. Eva had poor and it said, you know, call your man on speakerphone and um talk dirty to him. Here she go. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I said, Eva, since when did Eva become such a goddamn prude? Like, girl, Eva got on that phone. She was like, hey, babe, um, I just want to let you know that we're on the way. And I just can't wait to see you when we get home. Okay. And so that we can do some things, you know, I want to smother you. I want you to smother me. I want to smother you, you know, with the facial region and stuff like that. We was like, bitch, the fuck? No, everybody was sitting there like, do you want, Marlo was like, girl, do you want to get some coaching? You want, I want us to tell you what to say. Okay, everybody in the back like, bitch, tell me you suck sucking dick or whatever the fuck. I'm like, girl, give that, can give that to Candy. Everybody said give it to Candy. So Candy little fishbowl thing was to FaceTime her husband and to show him the booze in front of everybody. And she was like, girl, I ain't showing my nipples. Here goes Nene, new titties, new titties, new titties. And then Shamar was like, uh-uh, I want to see booze too because they said, okay, we'll let you um you know talk nasty to him that's what we'll let you do so she get on the phone and she was like hey babe so i just want to let you know we got a little break and you know i just realized like i've really been missing you and the things that you do and all that stuff you know like the let you know how i like it when you eat me from the back and all that stuff you know i love that shit i said go in candy what else what else, bitch? I like it when you suck my titties, and I like it when you put your finger in both holes, okay? You know Candy be doing some free shit like that, all right? But um, if you want to call that free shit, because sometimes shit like that just happens. So I, some of y'all be lying, but some of y'all fucked around and accidentally, you niggas accidentally or probably didn't accidentally, y'all slipped that shit in the back hole that one's supposed to be back there just to see what the fuck she'll do, but you sure no one let her slip it in yours. Mm-hmm. Try it. No, let me stop playing. Let me stop playing for somebody go, girl, try it. Anyway, Ashley at the dark got to come back. I just got to get some time because I got some shit to say. Moving on from that, what the fuck is your freak number? <laughs> um, Ty was like, oh, babe, what the fuck is going on? You look drunk. You said this in front of everybody. He was like, baby, you supposed to just play along. And then the next thing, Candy or somebody was like, why don't you just ask um Portia a, a true question? Okay, so Nene was like, is it true that, um, you know, has Dennis ever talked to somebody else or talked to somebody that someone else in this, has talked to somebody in this group or talked to somebody that someone in this group knows? And then Portia was looking like, should I answer this shit or should not answer this shit? Okay, well, Candy told me that he was talk. he had talked to somebody that, uh, she knew or whatever. It was like, how recently was this? She said, you know, he, she recently was talking to somebody that I knew or whatever the fuck. And she said, how recently is recent? I said, oh, shit. Nene was up in that confession, was like, him am I asking this question that I know the answer to? Yes. Do I think it's a whole bunch more tea to be spilled? Yes. You know, she just made... I think Nene do them faces and shit on purpose because she know they're going to be turned into gifts. Because guaranteed you, as soon as this episode is going on, it's probably some gifts out there right now about that whole confession that she just did right there with those faces. So Portia is like, what is recently? And she was, they was like, in the last six months. And then Candy was like, I mean, yeah, like three months or so. It was like, Portia, your ass was over there in a, um with some other dude at Shamia's birthday that you was all hugged up on a you Before that, Portia made it clear to put out that they've been in a monogamous, a strictly monogamous relationship, okay? Um, and then she kind of flipped the story and said that the person that she was at Shamir birthday party, which, which they put the picture up and they said three months ago, mind you, she said they was together for like six months or whatever. And they were strictly monogamous. She said him and old, her and old dude was like on and off, they type of on and all type of thing. And Candy said, bitch, and I seen you hugged up and kissing him. So, mm, what? I thought y'all was monogamous. Do you know the definition of what monogamous is? And then here go, um, Candy, of course she put out there about the tattoos. Girl, 
don't nobody give a fuck about that shit no more. And then she was like, and her name is spelled differently. And it was like, it's Sherry. Sherry with the lips. And then Marlo come over. Her name is Sherry. And said, I said, Marlo, shut the fuck up. Just shut up. Don't get involved in this because it's making me confused. Okay? And then here go Portia. She was like, you know, at the end of the day, we all to the good. So I'm comfortable with what's going on and all this stuff. And we together. And, you know, I said, girl, shut up. Pick a story. Memorize it and stick with it. Okay? Because you gave us a couple of different, different versions of this whole meetup. But moving on from that, they finally get to Destin. They get to the house. Nene said, okay, I want everybody to take a look at the house okay it's like a three-floor house bedrooms on each floor uh one of the bedrooms has bunk beds in it on both sides or whatever and it look like full size bunk beds full of queen size bunk beds so a bitch like me if i would have got that room i wouldn't have been complaining because bitch i that means i ain't got to make up the bed one night i'm sleeping on one bed and the next night i'm sleeping on the next bed okay so there you go you know what i'm saying so it and this tv's up in there girl i ain't gotta go nowhere just give me a um give me some drink and give me a little fruits and shit to snack on. And I'm all to the good, bitch. Go ahead to what you got to do. I'm good. Just got cable. Okay, cool. You know, got a little outlet right here. Okay, cool. We fine. You know, but see, I ain't no pretty bitch like that. So it don't take much to fucking um satisfy me. So I ain't picky like them. But Nene come up with this elaborate ass system to, you know, once they saw all the people, all the rooms or whatever, she said, we're going to come back down. And the people, once you had the, the numbers that you had got on the bus, that's the order of the numbers, the order you're going to go in to pick a person name out the jar. So once you pick that person name, um, you're going to go ahead and tell that person who, what bedroom they're going to get. So everybody got a bedroom. Marlo got the bedroom that she said ain't got no character. And she kept on saying, ain't got no character. It's boring just like Eva. Eva was like, bitch, I don't know who the fuck you think you are. Keep on coming at me like this, okay? Like I'm a free sample at Costco. No, I'm not the one. I said, you know, Eva got some cute little um shade remarks in her little confessions. I will say that. She got some cute little one-liners. I will say that. Um, But... You know, Candy got the room that she wanted. She just didn't want the bunk bed. Tanya got the bunk bed, which kind of makes sense because she the newbie, you know. But but then again, she the newbie without a peach, okay? I was about to say she a newbie, but Shamaria a newbie too, but she got a peach. So there's that. And then they go to the rooms, and then they get ready for, um, you know, dinner. They sit down, and they start talking about Eva because uh, I think it was Cynthia who brought it up. So how was your bachelorette party, you know? It was down in Florida, up in Miami or whatever. She was like, girl, it was cute, you know. I had a good-ass time. It was a surprise. And then <laughs> Portia said, it was a surprise, but you told me about it months ago. You invited me, so what you talking about? She was like, it was a surprise in a sense, in a sense that... You know, she didn't know as many people that came were going to be there. She knew a certain amount of people were supposed to be there, but not as many who actually showed up. And then uh, they was like, so why you ain't invite Nene? Okay. And nobody else show up. I said, y'all are messy and shit. She just didn't want to invite y'all asses. That's all. She don't know y'all like that. I don't blame her. So, Eva tried to basically say that, you know, a lot of people showed up. Some people didn't show up and all this stuff. And they were just trying to say, you know, if you are really cool with Nene, as you say, like Marlo said, that's your best friend. That's, you know, you know, forever. And that's your sis. Same thing that Cynthia was saying. And everybody was like, why didn't you invite Nene? She was like, Nene, is it weird that you didn't get invited? Nene said, bitch, we're going to have to stop with this big sis shit, okay? Because it's getting uncomfortable. Because I'm damn near the same age as some of y'all up in here, okay? And the whole thing was with Nene. Yes, it was kind of fucked up. You should have just extended the invite, okay? That's what everybody was saying. And at this point in time, you know, Eva was like, if it was a real bachelorette party that she would have thrown herself, of course she would have invited everybody. But, you know, it is what it is. And then Nene said, after Eva give this whole last speech about how Nene inspires her and all this stuff, all this, Nene basically said, yeah, it was kind of fucked up that you didn't extend the invitation. Was I going to go? No, but you want me to speak in your wedding, but you're not going to extend the invitation for me to come to your bachelorette party. That's kind of fucked up. So they cleared the air on that. They Porsche was like, we at this big ass table. Anything else that we need to be cleared up? Here goes Shamari. Yes, because, you know, when we was at the, um, 
dinner last time you went you and your friend um Darius I said bitch that ain't even funny that you trying to fuck up his name on purpose because everybody corrected her and said Dennis and then Portia was like yeah Dennis you wouldn't know his name because I didn't introduce you now whatever shade that Shamar was about to throw Portia caught it right then and there before she can even say it because she caught it with the, the, the Darius shade she was like yeah I didn't introduce your ass so before she could say that she didn't say it and she was like um, you seem like, cause me and my husband was having pillow talk about Portia, seemed like you had an issue with me. Yes, I do have an issue with you because word got back to me saying that you was talking about, I was talking about you, about you needing a makeover and all this stuff where I wasn't the one who shaded you. Eva was the one who shaded you. Okay. And she was like, you did this whole thing with bitch stole my look. I said, it's the same thing that be on, um, the shade room. They do bitch stole my look. They put up two different celebrities who got on the same, diff the same outfit and they say, which one wore better. And she was like, bitch, you and Candy had on red tops white bottoms that's it it wasn't no shade the person that was throwing shade that said your ass needed a fucking makeover i didn't say you needed a makeover it was eva eva sitting there looking stupid as fuck they do the slow-mo of her passing the peach following along and said she's gonna follow along to the rules of the game if you don't want to say who it is you're gonna pass the peach to the person who you think it is okay she passed the peach to uh shamari shamari was like what you know and so even just sitting there like girl I, that wasn't no shade or whatever and it was like you know if you be throwing a lot of shade and saying that you don't remember okay you got to remember your shade you know so all of this was a big misunderstanding and at the end of the day shamari and um you know eva uh, uh, uh portia hugged it out and that was the end of the episode y'all tell me how y'all feel about it and i'll see y'all later peace